In terms of, of people not going places, yes. Uh, let's suppose someone's pitching a script. Yes. And let's say they're in their thirties. They have a literary yeah. agent. Uh, they know that they're talented. Yes. Um, and they've written half of those scripts. They've run, or they've won screenwriting contests. They've made the rounds. Yet nothing's caught on. Right. That so, happens a lot. Yeah. And they're yeah. still not making a living mm -hmm. as a writer. What would you tell this person? Uh, become a brain surgeon. <laughs> no, it's seriously the. That happens a lot. And then it becomes a question of how committed, well first of all, what are you trying to accomplish and how committed are you to accomplishing it? Because you have to be clear on if your goal is to get rich and famous or if your goal is to do meaningful work. I, I personally, in my career and in my life, I favor the latter as an objective. Because if your goal is to get rich and famous, well then what you need to do is find people who've gotten rich and famous and have them mentor you. Because it's a recipe and you need to follow it. So that's one, that's one part of the answer. But the other part of the answer is, if your goal is to do meaningful work, then get a Canon 5D, learn Final Cut on a Mac, you know, make the work. You know, go to science fiction conventions, meet science fiction actors. If you want to do science fiction movies, they're very accessible. Go where, or go to film festivals and meet actors who aren't science fiction actors. Meet actors, befriend them, uh, you know, get them to be in your project. But make the project for the lowest possible number that you can make it for while still having it be of quality. And um, so that's where you need to meet people who have the, the skill sets uh, that you need. You have to have good sound, absolutely. You have to have a picture that looks good, a well that you should get a good DP. But there's tons of those people. Uh, so, but on the other hand, if you want to play the studio game and sell to the studios and, and climb that ladder and make millions of dollars, the way you do that is you move to LA, you go to every event you can where, where someone you admire is speaking, you go to the Writers Guild events, you go to the events at the American Cinema Tech and the DGA, you, uh, and you, you, learn, you learn your craft, you get good at writing. You have people read your script and give you notes who are, who are professional screenwriters, not screenwriting teachers. It's very important when you're getting notes from someone to ask yourself, have they ever written and sold a script? If they haven't, then how are you going to learn what you need to learn to have a successful career if you're learning it from someone who's never done it? I mean, it, it, it's possible you can learn that, but it's much harder. So for instance, one thing I advise people, I mean, people can hire me to read scripts and give notes, that's fine, uh, but they can also reach out. if you had. 10 of your favorite screenwriters. Uh, you could write them care of the Writers Guild. Uh, you just put on the envelope, please forward the forward letters. Don't send a whole bunch at a time, but send one at a time. And you say to that writer, you send these one at a time. Let's say you choose 15 of your favorite screenwriters. And you say, I've written a screenplay. I'd like to pay you $1,000 to read it and give me notes. I promise you, one of them will say yes, because they are never offered money to read scripts. They are always having people wanting, wanting to read scripts for free. The reason you don't send all 15 at once is if you get 15 yeses, you're out 15 grand. But the point is, let's say you get some A-list screenwriter to read your script and give you notes. If he responds to it and he likes it, amazing things can happen. So, but don't, don't require that. Don't have that be an expectation. Because even if he just gives you notes, you're miles ahead. He just has to be someone who's writing in a genre uh, that's similar to yours, or writing in a, in a tone that's similar to yours, so he's going to get what you're up to. But um, but that's what I would recommend because um, uh, you know I mean some of the screenwriting teachers are good, some of the screenwriting gurus, but a lot of them uh, you know are just going on guesswork or they're throwing up a lot of rules. The, my, my, basically, I feel that the more rules someone lays down in terms of what a script needs to be, the less they know what they're doing because. In reality, when you get really good at writing, you hear the music. And structure becomes second nature. It's like, it's like the bones of a house. You're building a house, you know how a house has to stand. The bigger the story, the more elaborate the bones of the house. But, um, but that becomes almost second nature. It's like breathing. And then it's just finding the truth of the story, having the characters be alive. It's, it's, as I said, it's hearing the music. It's not like, oh, by page 7 I need to have this happen, and by page 12 I need this to happen. By, I mean, the big structure basically is simply you start with someone who has a problem, you get them the deepest shit possible. If it's a happy ending, they get themselves out of it. If it's a tragedy, they fail to. I mean, that's structure. And, uh, you know, you can also study movies that you love and take them apart. You can sort of, you know, you can record them on audio and listen to it, and that helps you analyze it better. You can listen to a movie to analyze the, the, the writing. You can turn the sound off and watch a movie to analyze the directing and see how, this, how it works as a series of shots and movement within those shots. So those are two things that I do.